Hi, we're here with Chris Shortis at the Australia Day Beach Party hosted by the uh, True Blue Crew. Uh, now, Chris, uh, you were discouraged by Victoria Police from coming today, but you made an appearance uh, here. Uh, it's been a successful day. Everyone had a good time. Uh, why do you think that they decided not to, uh, didn't want you to come? Uh, it's just uh, bully boy tactics by the state. Uh, I've obviously challenged the state in the past about their political correct doctrine. Obviously, I was one of the Bendigo Three that took part in the mock beheading. I've challenged the state through videos regarding multiculturalism, uh, political correctness, because I'm a nationalist in my politics. And I just see that two detectives that came to my place, it was just pure intimidation because I had no search warrant. They didn't, they didn't have any charges to lay upon me. It was just intimidation. and. Uh, a gross misuse of police resources because they could be out there actually protecting the community instead of uh, trying to ruffle the feathers of uh, nationalists or patriots because they have a different political point of view than the state. It sounded like, because you made a, a video on the Australia First uh, Victoria uh, Facebook page about uh, the detectives coming to your house, it sounded like from their uh, questions to you that they're, they're actually more worried about the left reacting to you. It sounds like that they should be more concerned with what the left has got planned for a day such as Australia Day. Um, they never said anything like that to me. Um, I mean, that could be the excuse that they could hide on them, but they didn't actually say anything of that nature to me. Um, but whether it's that reason they want to give, which they didn't on that day, or whether it's because it's pure intimidation, which it was, or attempted intimidation, um, they had no right to do it. And by doing so, um, they haven't carried out their threat uh, because uh, they're in violation of law if they did because I've been here before this started handing out leaflets for Australia Day, uh, Australia First Party, you know, on the issues of African violence and uh, other issues and even issues concerning Australia Day. To now, often in the mainstream media, you're uh, described as a member of the United Patriots Front, which you're, which you're not. We've already talked about that you're a member of the uh, Australia First Party. What other uh, activism did you engage in uh, these days? Well, these days I do videos which are controversial topics on uh, UNA Media or United Nations Australia, and obviously some of those videos are done on the show first part. Uh, I am involved politically. I've got personal plans, obviously, out there because I want to uh, better myself because I want to tackle the system uh, legitimately. Um, I'm trying to get in the uni to study law. Uh, I've got things which I planned. I do have political aspirations because I believe the only way to truly uh, attempt to make a difference is actually get into Parliament, whether it be state or federal. And now, uh, you have previously described yourself as a white nationalist. Uh, what exactly does that mean? Uh, my nationalism is uh, from Australia First Party. It reveres our history. Our forefathers intended a white Australia. I simply believe in the model that our forefathers delivered, which, by the way, actually came from the Australian Labor Party, which formed out of the Shoe Strike of 1891. And I believe in an economic policy, which is a mixed economy, where certain assets that Australia uh, must remain in government hands, as well as uh, relative and good um, economic enterprise, which benefits Australia and for Australians, and that. Australia should have remained a racially homogenous state. It should not have become a multi-racial society as it is today. Do you think that, that may, that's maybe too far for the Australian public? Because uh, civic nationalism, which uh, encompasses you know, people, people of all races, that has yes. uh, brought, uh, broad support. And uh, as we've seen with the, the recent polls, 70% of Australians Yes. Uh, of all background support, uh, Australia Day. Yes. Um, so uh, why this uh, focus on uh, white nationalism? Because people have got to understand, like obviously you're aware that I was one of the Bendigo Three that was charged under Victoria's Racial and Religious Tolerance Act, Section 25-2, which states uh, that I was found guilty of uh, inciting serious contempt. Uh, ridicule and revulsion from a class of persons, namely Muslims, despite no Muslims making a complaint. Uh, so in other words, there was no victim. And the scandalous thing is that these things only exist 
because of a multicultural society. So the more multicultural or more multiracial that we become, the more that they jump on these racial uh, or religious vilification laws to police what is a multicultural concept. Now, we didn't need those things before a multicultural society. And the only uh, class of people that are losing out to this are white people. Okay? Um, you're not going to see a white man take a black man to court because he was racially vilified. All right, because there's been talk in the media in the past. I remember an instance where Andrew Simons, uh, an Australian cricketer, I think he was part Aboriginal, he was from Queensland, and uh, they played a one day over in India. Now, he was called a monkey over there. And da the late Dave Brooks described oh, racism against uh, white, uh, whites doesn't exist. It only happens the other way around, and works to that effect. It's different coming from that angle. So it is white man that has actually been dispossessed from the land on which he built. And um, I'm not going to go down the apologist line for being an Australian nationalist. And by virtue of being an Australian nationalist, is a white nationalist because our forefathers actually saw and envisioned this country to be a white nation. Um, and the fact of the matter is, if I'm a Nazi or a racist because of what my forefathers believe, every name that is etched on the war memorials around this country before 1972 fought under what is that regime of white Australia. Because I can tell you something now, my grandfather and, you know, and generations uh, before that believed in that very system that people actually came before as a nationalist today. Now, it's a state election here in Victoria, and uh, during the past several years we've seen the uh, feral left and also the uh, African youth uh, crime really uh, take off. Yes. Uh, do you have, uh, do you think this is a good you know, opportunity at this state election uh, to, to really improve things in Victoria? Because it seems to be we've got the, the worst of, you know, uh, of what, of what you described here in Victoria and uh, certainly it's not helped by their leadership both at the government level and also at the police level. Well it's also at a federal level too, so federal, state and local level. The fact of the matter is, is that the reason why, and uh, I'm being very cynical when I say this, is that they won't enforce our laws is because I believe those who are in government actually hate our laws um, because our laws were created, if you will, by the white man. Um, the Australian Constitution, uh, the, the system of law. They're refusing to um, enforce what laws that are on the books. And unfortunately, during the um, time of Steve Brax, and when Rob Hulls was Attorney General of the state, unfortunately, he positioned a judiciary which was stacked with a left-wing ideology. And hence, that is reflective of the wide-ranging uh, wriggle room on which the judiciary has from allowing degenerates to go out on probation or the suspended jail term for the most grotesque crimes. There was actually someone in Victoria who was not a, a national, he wasn't even an Australian citizen, an, Iran, an Iranian, who actually was a bouncer who committed assault. And he did not receive a conviction at all. Yet I received a conviction when there was no victim for simply pointing out a tenant that exists in Islam, which is the beheading of people. That's how inconsistent the state is with its law, because the judiciary is unfortunately, I believe, left to instead. And uh, you could thank Rob Hulls, the former Attorney General, State Attorney General under the Steve Bratz and Brumby government. Well, Chris, I appreciate you giving us your time uh, today. Uh, good luck with your uh, future projects and I uh, will definitely uh, keep in touch. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.